One of the most important and celebrated artists from the Edo period of Japan, if not Japanese history in general, is without a doubt Hokusai. He lived from 1760 until 1849 and is primarily known for pieces such as the Great Wave of Kanagawa, which uh, was part of his 36 views of Mount Fuji. And this Hokusai was an exponent of the Japanese artistic genre of ukiyo-e, which flourished from the 17th century until the 19th century. Now, ukiyo-e, which can be roughly translated into pictures of the floating world, were woodblock prints and paintings of mostly human subjects, such as kabuki actors, sumo wrestlers, or beautiful women. Hokusai's first master was Katsubaka Shinsho, and it was during his apprenticeship with him that he got his hands on some engravings from France and the Netherlands, which at that time was illegal since there was a ban on anything non-Japanese in Edo period Japan. He became inspired by the coloring and perspective used by these European artists and integrated these elements into his own work. Thus, Hokusai was able to revolutionize the ukiyo-e tradition already at a young age, partly through European art. When Shinsho's successor, Shinko, got wind of Hokusai's illegal influence by European art, he expelled the Japanese artist from the academy. Hokusai, nevertheless, went on to become one of the most popular and important ukiyo-e artists of Japan. He produced over 30,000 paintings, prints and sketches throughout his career, many of which were sadly destroyed during a fire in his studio in 1839. Hokusai broadened the horizons of ukiyo-e by introducing new subjects such as flowers, animals and landscapes. The rising popularity of landscapes could be attributed to the increase in tourism within Japan at that time. The most famous example of Hokusai's landscape paintings are without a doubt the previously mentioned views of Mount Fuji, which is the highest mountain of Japan, towering over the current capital, Tokyo. Now, as to why Hokusai made so many depictions of the same mountain, besides the popularity of the genre, another explanation could be Hokusai's personal conviction. He was namely a follower of the Nichiren school of Buddhism. Now the Nichiren Buddhists believed that upon the summit of Mount Fuji lay the secret of eternal life. Another fun fact about Hokusai was that he was the first to use the term manga. Now manga here has nothing to do with the current comic book culture of Japan. They were rather sketches about various subjects which meant to amuse and inspire future artists. And these random sketches were collected in the so-called Hokusai manga. In any case, what we can deduce from this narrative is that Hokusai was a special artist who was able to make exquisite pieces about all different kinds of subjects. This artistic versatility he translated into the adoption of different names under which he published his prints and paintings. Each name was to characterize a different side of the artist. Hokusai was at the height of his career at the age of 60, when he was immensely popular throughout Japan. Despite this, he himself was never satisfied with his work. 
He constantly said that he was convinced he would reach the age of 110 and that only then he would become a perfect artist. Despite not fulfilling this optimistic prediction, he did reach the ripe old age of 88 when he died in 1849. Hokusai is to this day one of the most important and influential artists of Japan and beyond. At the end of the 19th century, he was in fact a big source of inspiration for impressionist painters such as the French Claude Monet or the Dutch Vincent van Gogh. Hokusai continues up until this day to play a central role in the European conception and imagination about the culture of Japan.